Welcome to Practice Diary, and this week I'm thinking about how do you practice sliding between notes on a fretless bass. So I'm going to show you a simple exercise to help you practice this, and it's just using a pentatonic scale. So I'm sure most of you know the pentatonic scale. The obvious ways to play a pentatonic scale is something like that. It's a G major pentatonic scale. E minor has all the same notes as G major. So I'm going to stick in that key for the time being, but you can practice this in, in, in all keys, and it's a really good idea to practice playing these kind of things in different keys. So that's the scale I'm going to use, but I'm not going to play it like that. I'm not going to use those patterns. I'm going to use the same notes, but I'm going to play it in a completely different way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the first note, G, with my index finger, and I'm going to slide up to the next note, which is A. So from G to A with my first finger, then I'm going to play a B, and then I'm going to switch to the next string, and I'm going to play a D with my index finger, and I'm going to slide to the E. Okay, so that's the pattern. So what happens is every time you play a note with your index finger, you slide it. So you're playing three notes on each string and you're always sliding when you play with your first finger. So it's gonna go G, slide up to A, B, D, slide up to E, G, A, slide up to B, D, etc., etc. So I'm gonna pretend I'm playing a four string bass at the moment. I, I, I only have a six string fretless bass. I don't have a four string fretless bass because I sold mine after I bought my six string. But I'm gonna I'm gonna play it exactly as if it was a four string bass and all the tab is gonna be for four string bass. Okay, so let me play that for you one more time. And then the same thing in reverse. So a couple of pieces of advice I'd give you if you're going to practice this. Number one is find some kind of backing track. So whatever key you're in, I'm in G major, so I would just type into Google G major backing track. They're easy to find. And practice by playing along with some kind of chords. I've actually made my own chords here. Um, but you need to have something so you can hear whether you're getting those slides, the notes in tune. It's really, really important when you're sliding. It's so easy to go a little bit sharp or a little bit flat. You need to have some kind of context. So use a backing track. That would be my first piece of advice. The second piece of advice I'd give you is, is just don't feel like you have to practice the whole scale all at once. Just break it down into small sections. So you could start by playing just, just short lines off the root, for example, like this. Okay, or you could do lines off the fifth. And off the second. Okay, and this is going to really help you come up with nice musical lines. So, for example, when you're playing in the key of G, G major, you can use these same ideas to come up with some musical bass lines. Um, now, so far everything that I've practiced has been with my index finger doing the sliding. Obviously, you can slide with any of the fingers on your left hand. It doesn't have to be your index finger. So another way that you could play this, another way you could practice, would be to practice sliding notes with your little finger. Now, that's a little bit more difficult, um, but the way that would work, it's exactly the same scale, but it's going to be slightly different because I'm just changing where I'm sliding the notes. So I'd play the G with my index finger, the A with my little finger, and then I'd slide up to a B. Okay, and then on the next string, D with my index finger, E with my little finger, slide up with a G. Okay, so it's always the little finger that's doing the sliding now, so it's going to sound like this. And in reverse. But it's not about how fast you can do it, it's about getting those notes really smooth and in time.